the to and fro, hard working at the mill, never fail in the mail, yet come a rotten bill. Too much money to be there. Too much money to be there. Too much money to be there. For me to be involved in. You listen to Keris and I'm speaking with Eric Burden. So how did it feel then to take all of the music that you learnt from the jukeboxes from American artists, you took it all in and then you came out with the music that, you know, the, your song choices, your stylings, and then take it back to the Americans. How did it feel? It was great. It was a great experience. I mean, uh, we, um, apart from the fact that when they released uh, House of the Rising Sun, up until that point, we recorded the longest single ever recorded. In America, uh, it's all commercial, you know. There is no no leverage for the art, you know. And uh, you're not allowed to play anything over two and a half minutes radio in America. And even then, the DJ cuts in halfway through, you know. So um, Alan Price in particular was thunderstruck when he realized that they took the organ solo and lopped it in two in order to make the record short. <laughs> This is in America. Yeah. And then, uh, then what, what was uh, extra crazy on top of that was we'd go to nightclubs and American bands had picked up on the fact that this song, House Rising Sun, was such a big hit. And they, they would play it and they would play the cut. Right. <laughs> in, the, in the record, in the middle of the solo, they would play the, the edit. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we thought, you know, these guys are so stupid. I mean, that's ridiculous. But then our journey to... Every town I go into, a just major town, I just grab a car and say, you know, take me to Black Town, take me yeah. to Brown Town, and um, I would get into clubs and and meet people like John Lee Hooker, for instance. Because you, you ended up playing with Sunny Boy, for instance, as well, didn't you? Well, they, they came to Newcastle. They came to Newcastle. Um, Sunny Boy Williamson, John Lee Hooker. A lot of great stars, Bo Diddley, like that. What was it like playing with Sonny Boy? Because he was quite a character by all accounts, wasn't he? An incredible harmonica player. Yeah, he's, he was great. One thing I'm always ashamed of is, is I don't bother playing harmonica myself, and yet I can say that I got lessons from Sonny Boy Williams. And, and when I say that, uh, harmonica players are like... How dare you, you know I mean? Do you know, remember It's the same thing, get out of here, you know. <laughs> yeah. He once said to me, um, I'm in England now, he says, uh, I'll see you wearing a nice suit, you know. You gotta let me know where to get a suit made. I wanna get a special suit made. I said, Well, you gotta go to London for that, you know. You gotta go down to the west end of London. You gotta go to this place, Savile Row, and I wrote it down for him. So I saw him about a few months later. And I said, How'd it go? He said, Yeah, I went to that Savile Row. I gave them a design for my suit, you know. He says, It was a two tone, you know, for, for stage. And he said, one half was mustard and the other half was black, and one leg was mustard and the other one was black. I said, well, how did it turn out? He says, oh, it's great, it fits well. He says, the only thing is they got the colors on the wrong side. No. <laughs> Can you imagine what it would have been like to be a fly in the wall there? Yeah, yeah, it was, you know, amazing, amazing guy. John Lee Hooker, though, took the cake for being the, um, the really cool old black dude who was, like, so soulful, you know, and people just loved him. And um, we got along really well. He gave me his his address in the States. When I got to the States, I went and visited him, stayed at his house for like three, four days. Was he quite laid back as a person? Oh, yeah. Uh, I just heard last week somebody was at the session that he did with Miles Davis for the soundtrack to an awful movie, but the soundtrack's fantastic. If you can find the soundtrack, it's really good. It's got Miles Davis, Roy Rogers, John Lee Hooker, on it and it's called Hotspot. After that session was over, Miles looked over at John Lee and he said, you know, you're the most soulful cat in the world. And John Lee said, I know. <laughs> That's brilliant. I'm a big fan of John Lee Hooker, so just stay here and you talk he's, of him. You got to play with a lot of good people as well and you know, somebody like Chuck Berry that you were a big fan of as a child, but did they turn around to you and give you a doff of the hat as well when you were singing and playing? And... I never ever got any sort of um, insults or, you know, thumbs down from any players. From press people and stuff, yeah, you know, what are you white guys doing here, you know, that kind of thing. But every time I went into a black club, it was like open arms, oh, come on, you know, get up and jam, and that, that kind of stuff, you know. Nina Simone was the only person who gave me some shtick for recording, don't let me be misunderstood. Yeah. 
because uh, she had released it as a single as well. And uh, I went to uh, see her at a, a concert in um, New York at uh, a university, which name escapes me at the moment. But Linda Eastman, who became Mrs. McCartney, she was sort of my guide to New York. And she said, Nina Simone's playing tonight, you got to go see her. I said, no, I can't. I mean, OK, I'll go and see her, but I'm not going backstage, you know. Oh, yes, you are. You, you know, you've got to face your demons, you know. So I went backstage and um, everybody cleared out. And eventually it was just myself and Nina and her guitar player and manager and Linda. And um, I walked up to her and I said, um, she just looked at me and she said, yeah, Eric Burton, aren't you? You're with a group of the animals, right? Said, yeah. She goes, so you're the white little mom <laughs> took my song and ruined it, you know. And I said, well, okay, yeah, you could say that, you know, but if you'll admit to the fact that on your second album, on the third track, it was taken from the prisoners in Louisiana State Penitentiary. And she said, yeah, my name's Nina Simone. What's your name again? <laughs> Starts in Hollywood. And uh, yeah, from then on, we were like the best of enemies. You know? It was great. Baby, you understand me.